Turner. This week, the pair are going mad about motors that you can make yourself. Well, perhaps you might be able to. This week, they've been to visit a kit car factory in Lancashire. Kit cars, what does that conjure up for you? Cheap, cheerful, fun cars, just like this beach buggy, Jeff. Nothing could be further from the truth. No? It's the cutting edge of British motoring. Well, I'll take your word for it. You don't have to take my word for it. Just take a look at these. Most of the cars you see here with their proud owners are made by Lancashire-based company Royale. What is a kit car then? A kit car is a car that people put together at home from a kit of parts. So what do you provide then? We provide the chassis, the body panels, all the chrome work, um, door glass, windscreens, more or less everything you need to build the car. And you've got two specific designs that you produce, haven't you? Yep. What are they? We've got the Royal Sabre, which is a two-seater sports car and that's based on a Ford Granada or Ford Sierra running gear. And we do the Royal Drophead, which is a five-seater, um, and that's, that's based on a Jaguar XJ6 Series 2 or 3. Some people like a kit car because it's an individual car. It's made to their specification, nobody else's, so they can build it as, as they please. Um, others would like a specialist car but can't afford a production model, say a Porsche or something like that. Why is it actually styled in this way? Because John, the designer, um, his favourite cars come from the 90s, 30s and 40s. Um, he loves the Delage, Delahaye bodies, and that's what's inspired him, really. The drophead's very English-inspired, whereas the Sabre's very French-inspired. Can a kit car be any kind of car? A kit car can be any kind of car, yeah. There's, I mean, the, the British kit car industry is the biggest in the world. It's bigger than America. So there's, there are quite a lot of cus uh, companies in England making kit cars from various ranges from your beach buggy up to cars with uh, a lot of class and style like these. Huh? You're a big fan of kit cars, aren't you, Jeff? Well, I love them to bits. I've built a couple myself. Why do you love them so much? Well, you put your own personality into it. I mean, you can build it as you want it. This one's a beauty, isn't it? Somebody oh. actually built this themselves. Took absolutely. them eight months. Eight months from start to finish. Absolutely beautiful. The only thing they didn't do was the spray job. Now, can anybody build them, or do you need some kind of deep technical knowledge? No, what you need is the determination to do it. Anybody at all can build a car like this. Even me? Even you. <laughs> now, it's something infinitely more simple, and that's Jeff's mechanical tip. Wiper blades. It's the simple things in this life that go wrong that cause you the most grief. There are two simple checks with these. Run your finger down the edge of the rubber. If it's pitted, change it. And the ends, that's where they start to split from. Just flick them like that. If it's starting to split, change it. And, but you can change the whole unit quite cheaply. Most shops sell these. Just push it off like that, and out it comes. Couldn't be simpler, but it'll save you a lot of aggravation. Now, the thing about these cars, Jeff, is that they're so easy to drive. Well, they are, but underneath the bonnet, it's all Ford Granada. So it's all mod cons. Yeah, absolutely. a beautiful, easy. classic finish. Lovely. Just like well, you. if you like classic cars, this week, We've got a wonderful competition for you. Carry on. Thank you. Well, last week the answer was an indicator stem, and the winner was Janet Vickers from Crewe, who wins a day out at the Nigel Mantell School of Racing. Now, this week, that great prize is four VIP tickets to the Classic Car Show at the GMEX Centre in Manchester on November the 30th, and that includes your dinner. So if you can guess what part of the car this is, send your entry to the address being shown below. You've fallen in love with this one, haven't you? I certainly have. I fell in love with this a long time ago. It was the first kit car I ever saw. Why is it so dear to your heart? Well, it's based on a Jaguar, so you've got fine engineering underneath. Uh, and it really is a lovely car, and it's the whole nostalgia thing of it. It's 1930s, which is a, a beautiful period for cars. And speaking of nostalgia, it's time to find out how Jeff got on with his Jag this week. What were you doing, Jeff? Bit of woodworking, a bit of French polishing. OK, we'll do a bit of driving now. Very good, sir. Now, one of the main things with classic cars is they have lots of bits of wood. Be careful taking them off 
and then you've got to find a man that knows his maple from his walnuts. Morning Phil. Morning Jeff. Can you actually uh, do something with these? Yeah, we certainly can. Right, so what's the first process? Right, the first process is strip all this old lacquer off. Right. Get rid of it all. And are, the, are these veneered? Yeah, these are veneered, and these have been stripped of the lacquer as well. Right. You can see this is the original burr walnut veneer. Got you. Some of it's missing here and here. So you can't re-lacquer these, you've actually got to put new veneer on. Got to re-veneer these. Got you. A strip of veneer is cut and fixed to each piece of wood, and then the wood is placed in a vacuum press. Miraculously, the press moulds the veneer to the exact shape of the wood, and 20 minutes later, voila, as the French say. And next, lacquering. So what's the process that uh, Gordon's doing now? Right, spraying four coats of polyester lacquer on. Right. The lem left seven days, harden off, and we send it back and buff them up. Right. So it's been lacquered and dried, but it's still not as nice as this one. No, well, what we do that, so it looks after seven days, then we send it back. So right. it looks like this one. Then we'll just show you how to buff it up. As you can see. Oh, yeah. Save the jaws then. That's beautiful, isn't it? This is more my kind of price range, unfortunately. 3,000 quid for your basic beach buggy. It's based on a VW Beetle. Unfortunately, though, it's not even weather for it. Cheap, that's what you... Don't mind the weather, get in there. Life's a beach. <laughs> Tell you what. Here we go. Oh, look at that. There we go. Very nice.